everyone, I'm Chris Compendio, and this is the inaugural episode of the Pensive Podcast. Um, I'm here with Helen Wang. Hello, Helen. Hi, Chris. Thanks for being here. Of course. Um, so we are in Morwood Gardens uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and it was very important for me that we do this first episode here with you because I feel that um, uh, you kind of inspired me to do this uh, podcast. Um, uh-huh. We're, we're going to kind of focus on mindfulness and um, try to talk about uh, different topics every week, and I thought that this would be a great way to start this off. Um, Thanks, Chris. Yeah, and I, um, I guess to get some background, um, you know, I, I went to school here at Carnegie Mellon, um, lived in Morrowood E Tower, and you know, you're the house fellow of E Tower, and mm-hmm. I felt that um, uh, there are a lot of things that I learned about myself during my time here. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I didn't really know what the term mindfulness really was, honestly. Um, how would you define mindfulness? Gosh, what a great uh, big question yeah. to open up with. You know, <laughs> mindfulness to me is something really different than um, well-being or being healthy. I mm-hmm. think it's the idea that you live your life with uh, presence, mm-hmm. meaning that you show up every day for the experiences around you. And being mindful is the art of being aware of what's happening to you, around you, right. how you're affecting other people. And so, um, yeah, it, it, it's a way of seeing the world, uh, a way of living in the world that's um, intentional mm-hmm. and uh, a choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess before we get the ball rolling, um, did you want to talk about a little, a little about yourself? Like, what do you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and how have you been keeping busy these days? Oh, my gosh, sure. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I've been, I'm a graduate from Carnegie Mellon mm-hmm. back in 1999. So it's been a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, came back here after 10 years. And since then, I've been working most significantly as the house fellow for uh, first year residential communities. Mm-hmm. And I currently serve as a director of res ed. Um, but probably my most recent sort of pivot in my life, which is really, I think, connected to mindfulness is my two year old, mm-hmm. um, Oliver, my um, son has uh, shifted quite significantly my thoughts about what is actually essential in mm-hmm. life. Um, what do we pay attention to? How can we use the economy of time to be really mindful and thoughtful right. about the choices that we make so that we can live fully, even if we don't always have um, the decadence of time? So that's big picture what I've been, what's been preoccupying my life and my, my time. Mm-hmm. Um, what I've been up to is just parenting and, yeah. and, you know, meeting amazing students and learning about myself through the eyes of students and trying to not mess up my kid too much. All right. Yeah. I imagine parenting must be quite an adventure for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's hum- the, the hardest and most humbling job I've ever had. <laughs> I haven't met your child in person yet, but uh, I've seen many pictures. He's, he's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> he's hilarious. He woke up this morning and told me, mama, I have a great idea. I was like, oh, okay. He literally said that, Chris. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess the format of this is um, we ask people to kind of send in questions. Sure. And, um, the topic we're talking about in this episode is uh, the idea of vocation. Um, what career do you want to go into? How do you figure that out? Um, because, you know, that's something that I'm going through right now, and mm-hmm. it's been very stressful for me and something that the two of us have talked about mm-hmm. um, outside of this podcast. Mm-hmm. So... Um, yeah, let's just get through some of these questions. Um, first one comes in from Francisco. I wonder who that is. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, his first question was, uh, short and simple. Um, should you strive to be the best in whatever is your vocation? Wow. Fran, yeah. <laughs> can always count on him for this question. Should you always strive to be the best at whatever it is that you're doing professionally? What I love about that question is it is so um, uh, basic yet so complicated, Mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, I think being the best at something in our minds in this society means that we have to put 100% effort in it, right? And when you put 100% effort into your work, at the end of the day, there's nothing left for you, right? Mm -hmm. So I actually have been thinking about how can I do my job really well with great pride at 80%? Mm -hmm. And no, I'm going to do it well so that I can save 20% of my energy for myself. Right. Um, I think you should always strive to do the best at what you're doing with what you have at that moment, which is really different, like moment to moment, context by context. I don't think we give 
every grain of ourselves to our professional life in such a way that there's nothing left for us at the end of the day. I don't think we do our jobs um, any good when we operate in that way. So right. to me, it's energy expenditure. Okay. Um, I think you should always try the best with what you have at that moment. Right. Um, I wonder myself if, if it depends on what you want to do in life. So, mm. for example, I kind of want to go into the art. So yeah. I kind of have the feeling that I have to be the best at what I do. Otherwise, I'm just not going to stand out because it's such a such a competitive mm-hmm. um, field, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I guess it depends on on what's important to you to you and to each person who sits in that you know, moment of quandary is being the best driven by a competitive spirit, right. you know, for you to be better than other, or is it being driven by your own personal ambitions to strive to a place where you can really like reach your capacity? I think those things are different. Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes And sense. I wouldn't want to privilege one or the other. I just think right. people have different ways of, of ascertaining what the best is. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see the next question. Um, this one is from Amanda. Again, wonder who that is. Uh, <laughs> um, I've gone through five years of school and have two degrees from CMU, and but even now I'm not really sure what I want to really do. I've never felt especially passionate about any academic field, and the things I feel passionately about are not exactly career-worthy. Do you have any thoughts on incorporating hobbies that inspire joy while working at a job in a field that you like just okay? Mm, gosh. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> I miss Amanda. <laughs> what a... Yeah, I feel like I talk to recent graduates about this a lot because we oftentimes say we put so much weight on our professional pursuit as if that is the only way we're going to signify meaning in our lives. Like if the thing that we do is where we have our biggest impact then, or is, is the only place where we find ourselves being um, uh, impactful, then that leaves no space for that, that the hobby uh, side of our, our work. Incorporating joy into our professional life is, is, is not um, optional. I think we have to find right. it, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. Um, do, do you mean specifically from, I guess, from your professional life or just in conjunct, like in parallel with your professional life? That hmm. question makes sense. You know, sense. lucky are the people who can have that inter- perfect integration between the prof- where like there's the professional joy is deep personal joy as well. Mm-hmm. I, I feel fortunate that I am right. one of those people because of how much I enjoy sort of being around people and working with people in that domain. Um, but I think, you know, for Amanda, like the question about, you know, I have hobbies that bring me great joy, you know, so what is where, how, in what manner is that coming out in your hobbies and how can you take threads of that into your professional life? That's the very question she asked, she's asking. So if, for example, you know, you find great joy, for me, it's like yoga. I find great joy in Mm -hmm. that. What elements of that yoga practice are important to me and how can I sieve that into my everyday professional life, right? So maybe for me, it's like, I'm going to find some ways to educate the people around me about mindful practice, mindfulness right. practices or healthy eating. Mm-hmm. Um, or if you're really into reading, maybe you can integrate that into um, some aspect of your work, whether it's a book club at work or um, you, you start to play around with prose in your everyday life. I think getting creative and, and, and giving yourself permission to, to do that, right? I think we have, uh, it's, it's easy to look at a job with a very sort of narrow structure like what is written in our job description is all that we are doing or expected to do but i think supervisors and our work culture would celebrate the creative thinker who tries to embed joy Mm -hmm. in your own personal inflection in your everyday life in your work life rather yeah um yeah that's really interesting i mean for me um me personally I, i i also have two degrees from cmu and i'm kind of trying to figure out what to do with those and um yeah, and I, I guess my situation is a little different. In that one of them is one of them is something I definitely want to do the writing part, mm-hmm. and then the other one is the just okay. I guess yeah. as described in the question, and I guess I'm just trying to find um, how I can kind of mix both of those in my life. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I think at some point my grand plan was to kind of get a quote unquote practical job mm-hmm. while also kind of doing the other stuff as kind of a hobby, but. Um, 
Mm-hmm. I don't know why some, as I'm thinking about vocation more, I'm, I'm feeling more towards the um, idea of doing something I love as my profession. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess my stress right now is just kind of trying out, just trying to figure out how to get on that path. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, f- I found that question really interesting um, because I'm sure everyone, no matter what you decide to go into, has some sort of predicament like that Mm -hmm. Uh, because it's important to to balance you know it's it's important to have a balance in general I think yeah it's balance or it's integration (laughs) right right? so I think that um I think that we so this is to your point about mindfulness Chris that life should be a balance between effort and effortlessness, right? So mm-hmm. our ability to sit in spaces where we are not always striving, like pushing ourselves, working, right? So right. hard to a point where we just forget the joy of play, you mm-hmm. know? And you can have the joy of play and be a little more effortless when you listen to what's really compelling you. Like what, and it's less passion. It's like, what is the thing in the world that I wake up in the morning and I'm like, I am not okay with the world being this way. Like, this is the problem I want to solve. Or this is a challenge I want to tackle. Mm -hmm. Or this is the creative experience that, like, really means something to me. And how can I craft a professional life out of dwelling in those questions of it? Sounds a little lofty, and it sounds a little um, perhaps impossible. But, Mm -hmm. but, like, we should start by actually having the audacity to ask that question. Like, what permission, what space is there in your professional life? Mm -hmm for there to be that sort of synthesis of a, a more effortless way of um, doing the work. Um, and there's got to be spaces for that, no matter what the job is. Even if you are in a cubicle, I, I, I kind of insist that there is. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I you know, I, I find that, as, you know, if we do our work selfishly, Okay, which is not sort of how we're socialized to believe work should mm-hmm. be. It should be all very sort of selfless. But if you do things selfishly, right, and like meaning that you really work from a place that's important to you, that you care about, I think we do our best work there. Mm-hmm. You know, I think we we believe in it the most. We're most authentic about it. So if it's about your iteration of joy and finding it in your work, go for it. Find it. Um, practical considerations. Um, yeah, are there um, for sure. And we have to think about it and be mindful of that. But there's got to be space in everything that we're do because doing to um, think about the pleasure in the work as well. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, very good question. <laughs> um, okay, let's move on to this next mm-hmm. one. Um, this is from Anonymous, mm-hmm. and it's a... Uh, it's, more of a story, more of a yeah. situation. Yeah, yeah. So let me try to read this without flubbing it. Um, let's see, right now I'm just starting my job search. I'm still scared of what's to come, and there's a tiny nagging voice in the back of my mind that says I have to, I should have started sooner. But if you're too busy and stressed to find a job, how are you going to do when you actually get a job? The past two months I spent in school weren't a complete waste of time. I focus on mental wellness and two new projects to add to my portfolio. Now I'm more than ready to start rigorously, rigorously applying for jobs. The way I'm going about it isn't, per- isn't perfect, but it's certainly something. Resting and stepping back actually make you more productive. There's nothing wrong with waiting until you're ready. As for my vocation or a long-term career, I'm honestly not completely sure what I specifically want to do in my field, architecture. Architecture is all about designing buildings, but firms tend to focus more on tend to focus on specific types of buildings like offices, labs, schools, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, last year, I thought what I wanted to do... Uh, last, year, last year, I thought that I wanted to do something iterative and experimental like design research, but even then, that wasn't set in stone. A lot of my goals and values had changed as I continued to do work and immerse myself in different kinds of projects, such as educational buildings, cultural centers, and environmental technology. Now, I'm starting to figure out what kind of work would be the most fulfilling for me in a potential career. I guess what I got out of nearly four years of studio experience is that you have to do, you have to do different kinds of tasks and create a bunch of projects to figure out what you enjoy the most. You'll end up doing a lot, a lot of things you either feel lukewarm about or don't like, but there are still valuable experiences that will help guide you to work on things that you like. To quote Finding Nemo, just mm-hmm. keep swimming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. I like that so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because what it's pointing to is the... um, that there's never going to be a point where we're perfectly ready to to put ourselves out there. And that's so much of finding that vocation is about courage, you know, it's yeah. about taking a risk and believing that, ev- that, you know, even if you don't have all the skill sets that that job is looking for, you can, you can find it, you can, you can do it. And it's confidence building and it's, mm-hmm. um, it's scary. Um, it's also iterative, right? This this architect um, speaks perfectly to that, that um, without knowing what is the perfect job out there, you have to iterate, you have to play, you have to see what sticks in and not attach, again, a mm-hmm. mindfulness idea, attach to the outcome, knowing that um, all you can do in your job search is to put your best self out there and then maybe there's a fit and maybe there's not a fit. And maybe the fit is about the people who you're talking to maybe the fit is about the environment maybe it's about the task that's embedded in your job it could be a host of different things that all of a sudden the person who never thought that they would work for microsoft ends up working at microsoft because they love that person that they're reporting to you know that's awesome so yeah, I, I think the idea that um you know you don't really know how good it is until you get there mm-hmm. is kind of fun in a way mm-hmm. um i mean Sometimes you don't really know what you're looking for until you're actually searching for those jobs. Like, you, right. like you, until you, you know, like when you say, for example, you get to an interview mm-hmm. um, and, you know, it's just like a standard interview for you. But as you kind of learn more about the job, you know, mm-hmm. you kind of start to, you know, maybe fall in love with yes, it. Some, yeah. There's some aspects of it. Maybe, yeah. maybe the people there, the yeah. environment there. Yeah. Um, you know, because it, it's not just them learning about you. It's you learning about them. Right. Um, so in a way, even... You know, I've had tons of job interviews that were not successful, but they kind of helped me to inform of, mm-hmm. I guess, where I want to go. Totally. I think, you know, it's still, if if we can see, the, so the job search is stressful, no doubt. Absolutely. But is there a way to sort of, yeah, like no matter how we spin it, it's stressful. Mm-hmm. But there is there a way to sort of invert that a little bit so there's a sense of, um, I'm going to follow my curiosity. I'm going to figure out what questions to ask. I'm not going to attach to the external results, but I'm actually going to use this to mine for the kind of things that bring me great joy, where I know I have great power in, or my voice is the steadiest, where I can have the greatest impact. And actually, as you so eloquently put it, Chris, it's like you're interviewing them as well. You're trying mm-hmm. to figure out what they have to give to you. Understanding that this is a, it's, the job search is about matching. Right. You know, and it's less about, are you good enough to take this job? Because I think every person should go in assuming, not with audacity, but with a kind of um, faith that you can do the job at hand. Yeah. It's whether or not it's the right job for you. Right. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you to this, um, this person for sharing this yeah, with us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, before we circle back to mm-hmm. these other Francisco questions, mm-hmm. um, I forgot to mention in the beginning the the origin of the name, the Pencil mm. Podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, at Etow, right? I assume you still do this, I but do. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, um, we, I, I guess it was a weekly sort of email. Like I, I don't know how to describe it. I guess they're like st- st- maybe stories or yeah. essays mm-hmm. or however you would put it that um, either the residential staff or the uh, the residents would share, um, I guess, their their thoughts and feelings about, you know, mm-hmm. what's going on. And um, uh, it was called the Pensive Pineapple. The yes, pine- pineapple being kind of our thing at E Tower. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I wrote a couple myself. And um, I have two years' worth of Pensive Pineapples. Oh, and, and But, yeah, I still have them on my bookshelf that's somewhere. Awesome. So um, yeah. I thought this podcast would be, like, a, a nice little spinoff of that. I love it. Um, I love everything about it. Feel, feel free to steal the idea if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I'd be I'd be glad to host anything if you know anyone in Eton wants to record something awesome. similar to this. Awesome, um, thanks. Yeah, yeah we're absolutely. starting to get really interested in this format. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so let's circle back to because sure. Fran here sent uh, a couple questions, sure. and um, we'll try to get through as many uh, as possible sure. since uh, you know uh, sure. you gotta go. <laughs> yeah. um, so this next question is. Um, um, should the potential social good impact influence your decision on which vocation slash career to do, or should you just do what makes you happy? Ooh, it depends on if being a part of the social good makes you happy. Mm-hmm. If it makes you miserable to do something, I don't think we should do it. Um, I think social good, 
That's really interesting. I think so. Okay, so in the new political climate, I've had so many more conversations with students where they've been mm-hmm. thinking about like adjusting their expectations for work because there's things that are happening that people don't feel good about. They can't right. go into X Y Z job because the political climate is not good. Yeah. So absolutely. I think that sometimes focusing on social good is what makes you happy. You know, it makes me happy. It gives me this is social good. That's a good right. reason to do it. But if if you're doing it out of sense enough to fuel a profession, you know, mm. or is it um, something that is, um, I would argue that both are okay. Like if you decide that you want to be work, but the the cost of that is pretty significant. Now I know some, you know, and that they do tremendous good for the work for the world. Um, but they brought, um, right. yeah. you know, distressed. And I don't know if we serve the world. It doesn't mean that those those vocations are not important. Because I would actually say that we need to cultivate a whole generation of people who have, um, like, such deep abundance and affection for this social cause or social issue that the, that the intrinsic motivation is really deep. Um, but I don't know. I think it's it's hard to make a just a judgment on that. Yeah. I don't know if this is sounding clear. My head makes sense. Yeah, that, yeah. that's that's fine. I mean, I I, I was talking with someone else um, a couple months ago, and we were talking about how um, he felt that this generation was kind of defined by um, people focusing more on self fulfillment, mm-hmm. which I found really interesting. It's something mm-hmm. I really thought about. And um, I guess when I think of um, people who are close to me, specifically people for me, Tower, um, I feel like a lot of there are a lot of people who kind of found that intersection, I think. Uh-huh. Um, so people who, um, they're self-fulfilled by providing to, like, a, a social good, I guess, which I find mm-hmm. interesting. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, there are, like, a lot of different things to do, to, a lot of different ways to do that, I guess. Uh-huh. Um, like, what I'm doing here is I'm kind of trying to create content, which I find, you know, kind of fulfilling. To, it's fulfilling to me to yeah. kind of create this, but I'm yes. also really glad that I get to share these and mm-hmm. hopefully, you know, Makes somewhat of a difference mm-hmm. to someone, even if it's like making them laugh or making them think. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's I don't think it's applicable to every single field, but I think there's definitely like definitely space for some sort of intersection there. Yes, I agree. I mean, I think it takes some creativity and an initiative and, and just faith um, that that what we put out there in the world can change it. Um, mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see, I think we're running out of time here, so maybe one more. Sure, yeah, um, I'm not sure which, there are three of them here. If you want to take a look and see which one um, <laughs> you find more interesting. <laughs> I wish I had read these before. Um, okay, so this one's, I've learned a lot about choosing a vocation. What has okay. been helpful to you in choosing your vocation? Interestingly, um, um, at, I think that you, this is so freaking cheesy and I can't even help it. <laughs> Go ahead. I think you just have to follow your heart. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, in my experience, I've done a lot of different things in my life and I was on a, uh, an academic track, like working on a PhD in American studies for a long, 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 long time because I thought it's what I should do mm-hmm. as opposed to what I felt like I really like was compelled to do, you know? And when I stepped away from my ego and what I thought modes of success were, and I really thought about, like, wh- how do I want to interact the- with the world? And what do I want to change and make better? And where is my power? Where is my strength? Mm-hmm. I found my way to this job that I didn't even know was a job. So my my advice would be don't look for the job. Don't look for, the, for like, some already created framework of what you think a job is. Imagine how you want to impact the world and look around at the people who do that do that in a way that you respect and then talk to them. And then something comes together. The universe like conspires in your favor when it comes to something like this. That right. you know, we're 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 meant to sort of call together our resources to figure from people who know us well to help us figure out where we're supposed to go. Um I also think there's steps along the way. I think the um the entry into a job is always the most difficult. Right, because you're yeah, not always absolutely. doing the thing that you're most passionate about, because you're developing your toolkit at the point, your skill sets, um, and that's just the way it is. But after some time, 
when you have the patience to learn the sort of fundamentals, then you get into the good stuff, right? So any profession worth anything takes some time to cultivate. You know, you're not mm-hmm. going to fall passionately in love with it and stay with it forever. I think yeah. there's things in there that um, you just have to grow into. So I would say a lot of patience is is really required. And just following the thing that you feel like um, – you deeply want to do not the thing that you're good at or mm-hmm. the thing that you think you should do going to the question about social good right um ultimately i think we find ourselves full circle and usually we do something that has some social good for ultimately because i believe that human beings are altruistic you know mm-hmm. in some ways um but it doesn't have to be this the the, the linear focal point yeah, and um, I think, and uh, I guess Take your starting to wrap up, uh-huh. uh, wrap, wrap up now. I guess I feel this is a very important conversation to have um, towards people. I guess around my age, like people who I guess are at the later stage of college, or people who have just mm-hmm. kind of gotten out. Um, you know, I, I'm living home with my parents right now, and I, I, I guess there's kind of personal pride that's kind of affecting me because I feel like I should not be doing that, but I'm, I'm kind of figuring out slowly that you know. This is not unique to me. Yeah. You know, people are still figuring things out. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, people eventually find something. Yes. Really. And, you know, it it, um, it takes... Everyone takes um, a different amount of time to get yes. to that point. Yeah. And so I... You know, I've been trying to tell this to myself for months, but, like, there's there's really no shame in it. And I no, think, yeah. yeah. And, because it's it's a weird period. It's a yes. real weird period. Yeah. <laughs> like the transition from I guess having all this structure from college mm-hmm. to trying to figure out, mm-hmm. um, trying to create your own structure. Mm-hmm. And um, I think yeah. yeah, I think it's a really important conversation to have. I have a lot of thoughts on this, and if I can share one really briefly on sure. that, it's for all of my recent grads. I if there's one wish I have for you, it's all that you take really good care of yourselves because. What happens is you build your confidence here and then you get thrown into the real world, whatever that means, you know, and you start to um, doubt yourself and you Mm -hmm. doubt your ability, you doubt your your capacity. And that is such a dangerous downward slope. If you forget about your um, abilities and your talents and your goodness, you have to get in touch with us, right? People who who have worked with you, who know you, so you can be reminded of that, Um, I think that if the most important thing a recent graduate can do is really take excellent care of your, yourself, your heart, your soul, your mind, you know, your mind, right? And um, start to build the life that you want instead of being afraid of what you don't know because we know you can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you can maintain, if you can like stay, study the course and, and uh, try not to doubt yourself, I think... I know that you can do anything. So. Yeah, I think that's a great way to end this. Uh, Helen, thank you so much for uh, for being in this first episode. It's my pleasure. Uh, yeah, I had this idea for the longest time. I looked back at my notes and I, I wrote Pencil Podcast. The date was February 2016. I was like, oh, I finally get to do this now. I love it so much. <laughs> yeah. What an honor, Chris. And, you know, I don't think there's a better person to be able to shepherd this project than you. Oh, so. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, okay. thank you again, Helen. Pleasure.